Thank you, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, not just around the table, but also the people that are, um, that are watching it live. Uh, I don't want to take a lot of time. Uh, I, I want to hand over to the team that has far more interesting content than what I have to say. But you know, I do want to welcome folks and set the, um, set the table on uh, in somewhat why we do what we do, right? And so we pick kind of, we have many interesting things to talk about, but you know, we pick two of them uh, today. Um, but in general, you know, just give a broad brush on some of the trends that we see, that we all see, um, not just at Aruba, across the industry, um, in terms of what is driving a lot of things that we do today across the industry, right? Um, you look at it, it starts with mobility, which is where we started at Aruba a few years ago. And a lot of the things that we did in order to solve the mobility problem um, kind of carry over into many of the use cases that we are starting to see at our customer environments today. Uh, think about you know, um, the apps that when Aruba started, were largely in the data center migrating away um, you know, to either VPCs or cloud. So the cloud has become a big factor. But more and more, um, in, in recent days, a lot of conversations that we have also center around IoT. Right? And the kinds of things that we all think are going to show up on a network until we realize they're already here uh, in large numbers today. And you know, how do we now? carefully integrate them uh, into the rest of what we do, right? Until now, many IT organizations have been successful in um, keeping the OT side of the world kind of segregated, um, firewalled away, hair gapped away. But the need to kind of integrate the two worlds, the IT side and the OT side, starting to um, increase every day because the benefits of doing that uh, in terms of either the experiences that we can create for end users or um, you know, some of the insights that you can provide to lines of businesses. Um, those are starting to bubble up and become something that enterprises are interested in. And so how do you now responsibly uh, bring them over and get them to intersect with the IT side of the world um, without opening up attack surfaces um, and so on? So a lot of the conversations around IT center, IoT center around security. I mean, it's not just, we all think about, okay, the billions of devices that we have to onboard onto the network, but how do you do it without compromising security? Um, there. So those are the trends that we, um, you know, that, that we are also tracking, but if you look at how the network itself is evolving, and you go look at the uh, far left over there, that's the space we used to be at, right? And lo lots of times, you know, we had a private van uh, that brought all of the traffic from either the you know the the campus that the data center was associated with or the remote sites back into the data center and that was a gateway into the rest of the world right, through the internet right but as the migration to cloud started happening and that's why the middle one uh, is interesting uh, a lot of the traffic patterns were suboptimal if you brought them over a private van into the data center and sent them out. And the only thing that happened to most of the traffic was it would make a U-turn and go right back into the uh, internet. So why not start to look at optimizing the wide area network for the traffic patterns that we're starting to see over there. And that started us down the path of looking at SD-WAN as an industry. And you know we've been looking at it. But we believe that going forward, uh, in the future, the internet's going to become uh, the default transport. Um, a lot of what we think of as cloud will start to blend, where you know everything, whether it's infrastructure, platform, everything starts to uh, be offered as a service, be consumed as a service, but independent of where they are located. Right? The differences between whether it's SaaS or VPC or data center will all blend together. Uh, they'll all appear as one, and you know the internet becomes a default transport, and that's where we believe we're headed. And so a lot of the things we um, Look at today um, with you know we we you hear the term SD branch and sometimes what does it mean and you know I don't want to steal the thunder away from Kishore and his guys um, center around the fact that we have to start thinking about it this way it's not just about uh, creating and optimizing a wide area network to suit each customer's needs but it's about thinking about the whole problem as you know the the remote side as a whole and look at that problem 
more end to end rather than just one segment of it. Yeah. So so you'll 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 hear more of that in there. Kind of forward. Let me do it the old fashioned way. Okay, got it. So uh, at Aruba, we think about how do you optimize, how do you deliver a superior operator experience? Right? If you think about the, the newer initiatives, the newer workflows and, and use cases that are getting added to a network engineer's life, uh, the only way they're gonna get free up their time to go look at these and absorb these is if we can simplify their existing workload in there, right? And how do we now modify and deliver a superior um, uh, operator experience because the customer feedback that we get is more than, you know, the network networking guys are not being rated on uptime anymore. Uptime is just assumed and, you know, you get no extra brownie points for maintaining uptime in there, right? People just, you know, expect the network to be there whenever and wherever. And if that is true, then two things happen. One is, you know, more uh, the the metric by which everybody is getting evaluated is more around user experience and the value of the network and its contributions to uh, business initiatives. In there, how do I make the network more valuable uh, to the business as an uh, overall, and you know, to end users as another um, another stakeholders in there? And we believe that the network has to work for the network engineer rather than the other way around. And in terms of solving those problems, you look at it and say that as an industry, we've been very good at delivering tools that help the network engineer be reactive. Right? If somebody reports a problem, we can go and have workflows that turn on details, you look at logs and you troubleshoot, and ultimately we resolve everything that uh, gets thrown at us. But can we go past that and make them more proactive? Right? So before a problem shows up, can I you know, identify and take some action and resolve it? Or can you even go further and be predictive to a point where you can prevent problems from even showing up? And a lot of that relies on two main things as we look at the infrastructure. One is um, programmability in the infrastructure. How do I now simplify the network that I have to uh, set up and operate? And two, telemetry, the data coming out of the infrastructure, and how do I process it uh, efficiently to, to generate insights and workflows that move away from being reactive to proactive and preventive. Right? So that, you'll hear that a lot in both, you know, both of the segments that, that we have uh, in place today, right? the programmability and the, and the telemetry being the center of many things that we build on top. So going back and looking at it, I don't know if uh, you're seeing that pop up in there, and if I do, apologies. Um, looking at the trends and how do you know how these are the ones that drive the infrastructure that we build, right? You know, it basically is mobile first because you know you look around the table, many of the devices here uh, don't have a wired option, right? And and you look at a building like this one that we are in, we've taken away the other side as well. There are no ports on the walls. In, in this building here, it's, it's all mobile. And if that is true, so all user connectivity is all going to be mobile first. Um, IoT is a big factor in, in, um, in what we think about in terms of the security solutions that we build, in terms of managing policy, in, in terms of segmentation, where you migrate, move segmentation away from the network into a layer that is you know, more agile and very amenable to a software-driven method. And we use, because of the fact that the cloud is, is an important uh, you know, element of everything, the, the trends that we see out there, how can we borrow from what the cloud guys have done in terms of building scale, in terms of building agility, in terms of building modularity, bring that into the infrastructure layer that, that, uh, that we build, the solutions that we build, use cloud native technologies to get those same attributes down into the network side in there. But everything that we do ultimately has to be secured right? because security can never be a trade-off. Um, no customer will ever adopt something new if it alters the security profile of their overall enterprise. Um, so security is a thing that 
you will again hear uh, throughout the sessions today about how everything we do, uh, security is an overbearing thing in there. And the last one that I want to leave you with is the fact that um, improving or delivering a superior operator experience uh, relies on the fact that um, automation uh, of simpler workflows where we leverage the data that is inherently present in the infrastructure that for years we hadn't necessarily paid attention to, but now once you start tapping into it, uh, gives us very rich insights into not just how things are today, but how they're trending. And that's how we're going to get to um, being more proactive and being more predict predictive there.